I have just returned home from a massive motorcycle adventure, starting in the Philippines and ending in the Himalayas. I'm gonna tell you all about it. First, I'm gonna go take a shower. Though. It's a stink. Holy crap, guys. It is boiling here in Manila, in the Philippines. I just dropped in last night. It's like 36 degrees every single day. It blows my mind. We're gonna go for a massive tour. That we are. The plan is to experience some tropical beach camping while riding as many twisties as possible through the dense mountains of the Cordilleras and to ride some of the most scenic roads loved by many Filipino adventure riders. The catch is, on the last day, I'll need to pin it back nine hours back to Manila in time for DGR the following day. In this episode, our mission is to make it to the secluded beach of Dibut in Aurora. But first, I need to pick up the motorbike. So let's go do that. I arrived at Triumph Motorcycles Philippines where I was welcomed by Ernest and the crew shortly before they revealed the bike that I'd be spending more than 40 hours in the saddle with. Thank you so much, hey. That's so sick. I wasn't expecting this. Maybe. The Scrambler 1200 XC is a motorcycle that I've always wanted to get acquainted with. Being an owner of a Triumph Street Scrambler and knowing its limits when it comes to touring and off-road riding, I want something a bit more capable and something with a bit more grunt while maintaining sophistication, class, and reliability. Yeah, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, hey. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Immensely. <laughs> I will be picking this up later tonight um, just for traffic and heat reasons because I'm, I'm drenched here in the workshop. So we'll be visiting here later tonight and then start our adventure. I needed to install an accessory that I've trusted for many years and one that is very much needed at the beginning of any motorcycle tour, especially in a foreign country. Quadlock has just released a new chrome handlebar mount. It's made from high quality CNC machined aluminium with a chrome finish and it fits all of your favorite mounts. For me, I love rolling with the vibration dampener paired with the wireless charger so that my phone is topped up as we navigate through countless hours of uncertain Philippine roads. Use my link in the description below for 10% off everything store-wide. And thank you so much to Quadlock for sponsoring this tour. Now to tackle the streets of Manila. Oh boy. Oh baby! This thing is freaking awesome! And I get to spend a whole week riding this thing. It's perfect. Alright, you must concentrate. Not used to riding on the right hand side of the road. I got no idea. Does it mean we can go still? Yes. With caution? Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna follow these guys. I can eat as well. Does that mean I can go? No right turn on red signal. No. That's all that happened. I felt a little bit anxious. This trip has uh, caused a lack of sleep. I think I've gotten like seven hours the past three nights. You know, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about I'm nervous about riding in foreign countries, especially third world country. First time ever. So yeah, it's going to be an experience and I'm excited to share with you guys. That's Michael. We made it here in no time. Oh, quadlock man. So happy. Thank you. Thank you for getting me here. I was so nervous. <laughs> The 
the big day is here and an early start is needed to beat the Manila traffic and the heat. Life feels good, everything feels good, I feel good. Got about four hours sleep last night. Jenna, poor thing, got absolutely zero. She was too busy loading everything up. Jenna's been a support vehicle, which is good for me. You know, if you have a support vehicle, you take advantage of it. You don't have to bring much luggage. Don't have a tent, don't have any water weight on me. Jenna's got all the beers. Up state. Feeling relieved that the busy Manila streets were in my rearview mirror and that the final toll had been paid, it was time to air up my tyres and answer the question you're probably asking yourself right now. Who the hell's Jenna? Hola! That's Jenna by the way. She's the brains behind it all. Look at her go. Shake it, shake it. Caffeinate up, Jenna. <laughs> Jenna and I met on Instagram a few years ago. So this was actually the very first time that we met in person. She's an incredible photographer and writer who is well respected among the Philippine motorcycle and automotive scene. Americano please. And a snack of some sort. I'll come in. BRB. And she planned the route for this entire tour. Caffeinated up, we took to the road, entering the big unknown and began the first leg of the tour. A few hours had passed and so did a few closed petrol stations. I was running out of fuel and fast. This meant slipstreaming Jenna in an attempt to save as much fuel as possible before the highway came to an abrupt end. Down to one bar of fuel as well. Oh baby. Instant sweat farm. <laughs> uh, I got 20 k's left. Leaving Jenna behind, I went on to find a petrol station but was only met with dust, heat and traffic. At this point, I was getting pretty concerned and all I could think about is that this cannot happen this early on in the tour. Mm, there we go, eh? There we go. We are saved. Oh, he is. Fall to the top. Oh, yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Nice. We are locked and loaded again. Oh, there's a massive one there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, I'll support the locals, eh? At this point, I was so far ahead of Jenna that I pressed on through the village traffic until I saw this. My goodness, man, that was some of the most incredible riding I've experienced. Just, just do what you gotta do and get through it. I was, I was jacked. That was so sick. I stopped here because we're about to ride into Jurassic Park here. Look at that, man. Holy crap. Holy crap. It just keeps on going. So, yeah. I'm gonna have a breather. That was incredible, man. That was so good. It's just funny. It's just like organized chaos. It's a, yeah, it's a funny thing, um, but it works. It's like everyone knows what they're doing. There's no, there's no confusion. You just own the way you're gonna go, make it obvious, and people know what you're doing somehow. <laughs> so sick, it's so good. All right, let's, let's attack this thing. Let's attack that. Oh! <laughs>
Dabon is considered by many as the onion capital of the Philippines and is the leading producer of onion in Southeast Asia. For me though, it's known for its absolutely stunning scenery and hours of non-stop twisties through the dense Bungabon Mountains. This was the perfect playground to get acquainted with the Scrambler 1200 and the Philippine roads while experiencing what life is like up here in the mountains. Oh man, look ahead. Oh, this is so good. This is the town center. Watch out, Yo, 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 yo. Pit stop got me swamped by a group of local kids. This is where I soon realised that they love the sound of the scrambler as much as I do. Bomba! All the kids, they love it, they love it! <laughs> so my wrist has still been giving me grief big time. It's been nine months since my accident and the ligaments still haven't fully healed. It's like it just stopped, I had heaps of work done to it. And I moved house and then it just sort of got bad again. So we've got some other riders joining us tomorrow to just, just to give you a hand through all the sand and everything because we're going to a damn beach guys. We're going to go beach camping. A remote beach that's only accessible by boat. See how we go but yeah if it's a full on strug my wrist will just blow out um, and I need to I need to save this bad boy. I need it for the trip. I need it for my life. There's it ADV boys. Yeah. I made it to the Ecom and had just experienced an incredible day of riding. Although I was still buzzing, I was wrecked. I was wrecked from the little sleep I had the night before. So it was an earlyish night for me in prep for a big day tomorrow. We're in Sabang Beach, the main beach of Valer. So and this is like the destination of any local and international tourists here, right? So when people come to Belair, they come here, not the places we're about to go. Oh, operation. Find the coffee joint. Sweating bullets already, eh? <laughs> hey, but you don't show it though. I'm literally dripping off my nose. Hi, morning. We caffeinated ourselves once again. This time, cheers to it. We made it, we did it. We did it, get that. Loaded up and headed out to meet with Nong and the crew that will be joining us on our camping. And this is Nong. He and his mum own and run this little Surrey Surrey store in Aurora. These Surrey Surrey stores can be found all over the Philippines and are the perfect one-stop shop for picking up supplies when camping. Once we grabbed what we needed, it was time to roll out once again, this time to Deepwood Beach. Jenna left ahead of us because riding the Philippines is much, much quicker and far more enjoyable than driving. So every time I had to overtake her, I made a point of it. Deboot Beach is located behind that mountain ahead of us and the only way to get there is to go over it. With some mild off-roading ahead, I had to work out how to change the damn riding mode. Oh, got ABS on. Okay. Off-road. 
Um, how the hell do I change modes on this thing? Did I throw? I think, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Only one way to find out. So, so man. With that test complete and Brando not being too impressed, I strapped on my wrist protector. All right. Gave the boys a little pep talk. Yeah, the boys. And we embarked deep into the mountain. I was like a heat stroke again. <laughs> it's so hot, man. Whoo! Now from here, we were supposed to get a boat to the secluded beach, but the tide's a bit high. The waves, you can probably hear them. They're a bit too, a bit too gnarly. We're gonna take the bikes, and they're recommending to not do it. We're gonna situate ourselves here instead, which kind of makes tomorrow a bit easier because tomorrow we're like about a seven-hour ride ahead of us. So this way we don't have to catch the boat back and rely on the on the waves and everything so we can get across safely we can just pin it straight back it's hot when they said the philippines is hot i didn't realize it's gonna be this hot but it's also just insanely beautiful man it's ridiculous here i can't believe it we're gonna oh the boys also bought a duck man we're gonna <laughs> home cooked a home home cooked duck so we're gonna fire that up as well have a swim and just enjoy some filipino vibes. First time camping overseas. I've been camping out in Outback Australia, just flat desert, and now I'm just in amongst like the full on tropics. There's all these birds flying around, and I'm not familiar with them, so it's interesting, it's nice, it's a good change. Yesterday it was my second day in a third world country, and my first day riding in a third world country. I was so grateful that by the time I got out of the city, I was crapping my pants by the way. I get out of the city, and I was following a GS rider, and I just tailed him, and I learned sort of the basics I guess the basic level and then I started to slowly understand and it's so much fun oh my gosh it's like the I'm enjoying it so much and then the 1200 scrambler is just banging uh, anyways I'm looking forward to our seven hour ride tomorrow I really really am we're going to Lake Tobayo to buy far out to get Tobayo and um, yeah we're gonna set up camp again the boys are cooking up a wild feast so yeah we're gonna we're gonna hook into that. Oh, 
Awesome. You, you drip uh, a bit of soy sauce, maybe some chilies. <laughs> and hook in we did. By the way, that fish is called a dorado. And it was tasty. Like, really tasty. So was the duck. Wow! Holy I hope I'm not rolling. <laughs> the boys did an amazing job at cooking this. Thank you, boys. You guys are the best. After a few more beers, a few laughs, and a full belly, it was time to hit the sack. Ready for another massive day tomorrow. Morning. So the landowner, she's like an elderly lady, she came up and said hello. Apparently back in the day, before that road that we just rode to get here was built, she had to go to school by boat. And the school was on the other side of the mountain and she was living here. The only way to get there was either to walk through the old logging track, which is kilometers trudging up and over the mountain to just get to school, or by boat. If the swell was too high, the waves were crashing and everything, they couldn't go by boat, they had to take that, that route. It was like 28 kilometers through the mountains just to go to school. That's pretty crazy. How incredible was that sunrise, by the way? Look at this, man. <laughs> it's so good. All right, Jenna's making us some brekkie. It's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> See how we go. <laughs> Little wieners, is that what you call them? Little smokies. Little smokies. This is, this is Jenna's go-to for breakfast, right? Um, with oatmeal. And this is apple cinnamon. Cheers. Yeah. It is good. It's the sweet and salty. It's actually good. It's really nice. I'm not just saying that. Mm. Breakfast of champions. I have now experienced what it's like camping in a foreign country and I couldn't have been happier with the location, the food and the company. Saying that, a special shout out goes to Nong and the Lost Boys for being so incredibly accommodating. Leaving Debo Beach was sad, I could have stayed there for an entire week. However, I had to remind myself that the adventure was only getting started. Mm -hmm.